Good morning, everyone, to this 91st virtual bridge session. Today, we have Thomas Murr from Northwest Regional College in Northern Ireland, who will be showing us a few tools that he uses in the Office 365 platform that promote independent learning, equality and inclusion. Over to you, Thomas. No problem. No, thank you very much. So, um, as Noel said, my name's Thomas Murr. I'm a TEL mentor uh, within Northwest Regional College. I'm just going to rock, rock this up. Um, and really, really what I'm doing is part of my TEL mentoring um, activities are showing staff some of the capabilities that Office 365 can, uh, contains. And some of these features happen and are upgraded overnight, literally. It's all based on the cloud. Microsoft do their announcement, and then all of a sudden, these appear. Um, no one knows about them. The Americans get them first, by the way. So we're then filtering through down. So five tools and tips for inclusive use in the classroom. And really, it's all about accessibility, okay? The quality of being suitable or adapted for the use of people with disabilities. Now, we're not going to cover all of the disabilities with these little tools uh, within Office 365, but we will cover a, a lot of them orientated around um, audio, visual, uh, listening skills, and mainly for translation for students with English as a second language, or even with just for literacy uh, issues themselves. So we look at reading, writing, communication. I believe we've got a maths teacher on board, brilliant, and we'll keep the best to last. And you'll see how Office 365 assists greatly inside OneNote and how it helps with some maths problems. So the things we're going to look at, oops, I'll get that later. The immersive reader inside OneNote. We'll look at a variant of the immersive reader inside Microsoft uh, Edge, uh, the browser itself. That's not my preferred browser, by the way, but it's the only one that really works with properly with the immersive reader itself. How immersive reader used, is used within Microsoft Forms for assessment and even within um, the new variants of Microsoft Teams itself. We'll look at the also dictation and transcription. So dictation, able to use artificial intelligence, picking up your voice, and it will transcribe what you say in live time, which is brilliant for those of us who hate typing and for our students as well, where you may be expecting them to give uh, a typed report, typed essay. Well, here's take a little bit of the pain out of it. Um, it works brilliantly within Word Online, and um, more important these days is this release that they have now for transcription. So a recorded audio file transcribed into text for us, and the artificial intelligence built into it is absolutely brilliant in terms of being able to dictate, or sorry, indicate which speaker is saying something and then to change to another one. We'll also look at the maths tool and how it converts either an inked equation or a typed equation into our OneNote and how it generates some quizzes. It's brilliant for uh, almost on the fly producing tests and little knowledge checks based on what you've already covered in your maths. And the big one really is translation. And you'll see how translation works with uh, multiple languages. So I'm, I'm pushing the boat out here because I'm going to try and translate from an iPhone to an unknown language. And I'm just going to see if there's anybody there who has a, um, another language that's not English. And we'll try and get it translated into your language live. And the last one really we're going to look at is live captioning. So live captioning or um, subtitles. So either through your Microsoft Teams meeting and how it automatically captions along the bottom for all the participants. Now, the unfortunate thing is I have no friends who are gonna join me in a Teams meeting today, but it is brilliant. And you will see it indicates who is speaking and what their, their, their voice is. The only downside, it only works for English at the moment, but Microsoft are working on multiple languages inside a single meeting. Um, we look at Microsoft Stream and how it does closed captions. If we get a chance, we'll look at PowerPoint Live. And PowerPoint Live really is brilliant for 
audiences, audiences with people who have multiple languages. So you could have an audience and run your PowerPoint and every individual is seeing a closed caption in their language as you present your PowerPoint. So some brilliant features. I think Microsoft, they do keep them uh, hidden. And as I say, the releases are a wee bit, not suspect, but they don't really shout about them too much. Okay, so we'll start with uh, the immersive reader. Okay, now I do a lot of my work in um, OneNote with my students. And the idea of the immersive reader is that you may have a, a lot of text that you want the students to read. And how do we get that so that they can hear it, audio, and even those who are learning English uh, for the first time or improving their English, um, this works quite well in terms of the grammar and so on. So I'm inside my uh, OneNote page and under the view menu, they have this immersive reader and you'll, be for, you'll see this icon quite a lot through the Microsoft products. So it's just through office.com, the Office 365 offering. So we run the immersive reader and the first time that it appears, it'll have some default values. So it's picked up just the text that appears inside your page. And without doing anything, you click the play button. A new vaccine that protects against COVID-19. And you get this gentleman's voice reading the text. And it is very, very accurate. Don't particularly want to listen to a gentleman. I can change it to female. I can also change it the speed. So hopefully you can hear. COVID-19 is nearly 95% effective. Early data from there. US company. Now, without any effort at all, that's it picked up the text, immersive reading back to the students or to you know, whoever's using it. Some little tweaks that you can have in the settings, text preferences. So for instance, we can adjust the text size for maybe those who are visually impaired. We also have um, the ability to increase and decrease the spacing between the lines. Microsoft, they've deemed a couple of fonts that they uh, understand are easier to read um, for certain people who um, have literacy problems. And also, they, you have the ability to change the coloring. Uh, anyone who has any knowledge of anyone with dyslexia, a yellow background with dark text apparently is, is quite good for them. So again, we can change those depending, and the student who's using it have their own ability to change the settings themselves. We also have some grammar options. What we can do is show the words broken down by syllabi, by syllabus, <laughs> syllables. So it's an on off. And you can see there from US com pan a. And it breaks the words down that the deems can be broken down. And again, when we play it, Moderna shows the results come words. hot on the heel. And it's brilliant for those who are learning English or, or English as their second language and come through. Inside the grammar options, we can also show all the nouns, all the verbs. And we can put a label on and label off so the students can see anything that's got an N on it is a noun, anything that's got a V just above it is a verb, and even change the color if you want. Okay, so everything that's highlighted in blue is a noun. Everything that's highlighted in red is a verb. Brilliant for those who uh, are you know, teaching literacy for kids as well. The third option there is our reading preferences. When we can have a line focus, um, I'll just move this out of the way. So we can focus on the line that's currently been read. The heels of similar results from Pfizer. We can expand that slightly as well. So then the next three lines that are being read out. Nice little feature is a Pictionary dictionary. Pictionary for those who've been played the game in the past. And the idea of that is that when you click on certain words, now it's not for every word, it has a link to a Pictionary, a picture dictionary. So uh, vaccines, well, what's a vaccine? Oh, now when I see the graphic, I understand what it is. You also have a little speaker there. Vaccines. Where the word can be read out to you. 
Now, if that's not good enough, this takes it to the next level. I can now get my text translated into, oh, haven't even counted the number of languages. So anyone do a shout out there for a language, maybe they're, it's their second language, maybe it's their first language. I had a Bulgarian native speaker last week, a little presentation, and she said the translation was fantastic. So what Polish I can do- would be good. Polish? Yeah, yeah please. Brilliant. Oh, man, we'll P Polish. There we go. So by default, it translates by word. So by word, I can click on a word. Here's the English pronunciation. Pewności. And here's your Polish pronunciation. I can also translate effectively the whole document in the Polish. And here's where the live. Wyniki są gorące na piętach podobnych wyników z Pfizer i dodać... OK, now I'll play it all. But what do you think of the Polish translation, if you heard it there? I'll try that again. ...z rosnącej pewności, że szczepionki mogą pomóc zakończyć pandemię. Obie firmy stosują wysoce innowacyjne i eksperymentalne podejście do projektowania szczepionki. OK. And I can flick back then to the original... English translation. Now it is based on the cloud, so you see a little bit of a delay there when it's doing the, the translations between the two. Again, it depends on how busy the system is. So our immersive reader, um, going through this fairly quickly here, allows us to pick up text-based content. So go back, it looks at the content of your page, the original source, and all the text-based content is um, able to be translated, put into Immersive Reader. That also works for Word. It also works for our Microsoft Forms. So again, when I move the mouse inside a form, there's a little Immersive Reader. So it can read out the question. It picks up your previous settings. So if I have it in Polish and a color and so on, it's the, all the settings are there. Italian food quiz, tell demo. Answer all the questions. Results will appear at the end when you click submit. Okay, so to get the question read out to them and then they can then answer the questions appropriately. So if I like Italian food, I'll read it. Here's one, I'm maybe not sure what this question is. Immersive reader picks it up. I click the play. Three. What type of pasta is this? And Ten it, points. And it reads out then Pen. the spaghetti options. Lasagna. Cannelloni. End of question. Close the reader to input your answer dot. Okay. And then I can go back again. Um, inside our browser, it's a slightly different effect. Okay. Now I'm using Chrome because I find Chrome works best, best with our Microsoft products, but Microsoft Edge has inside it a inbuilt read aloud. So I can highlight the text of a web page, right click on it, followed by read aloud. A new vaccine that protects against COVID-19 is the similar effect of the event, effective. Um, Early data reader. from US company Moderna shows. Brings up a little toolbar, result... pause, fast forward. I can also change the speed. The Edge browser doesn't really have the options for different languages unless you install the language packs on your, your PC, on your desktop machine. So they're restricted really to English within it. So it's reading aloud. Okay. Um, Microsoft Teams. So we're all, not all, all Microsoft based uh, colleges are all using Teams for their interactions and again i'll just find a little comment here and noel will appreciate some of these little comments so here's here's a comment from jared one of our uh, our network manager i'm not again english isn't my first language let's see what jared has to say three dots immersive reader and it reads the comment the conversation nicole gerard at thursday november 19th so you can see there, the Immersive Reader, it's built into a lot of the 365 products themselves. The next tool we're going to look at is our dictation and 
transcription. Okay, so um, I'll just see if I can move this out of the way so we can see what's happening. Okay, so text document, here we are, blank text doc document inside uh, Word. And the first thing really that we're interested in is dictation. So under our home button, this is Word Online. It also has Word, the desktop version of it. You have a little dictate microphone. So click on it once and effectively everything that you say is now being dictated into the Word document. Click on the microphone and it stops. Now, obviously my dodgy Northwest of Ireland accent, it can't pick up everything. And you then have the option then to edit as we go along. So we click dictate and it will very, very quickly translate your language into text. Okay, brilliant. Take it a step further. And under that, we have a transcription. So we can transcribe content that's already been recorded. So we click on transcribe. And what we can do is either start recording now, or we can upload an audio file that has already been recorded maybe through a dictaphone or through one of the Microsoft recording uh, applications. So if I do an upload audio, I have on my desktop a little short audio clip. It uploads it onto the cloud. Now this is only eight or 10 seconds long. It does take a little while to process it. So just be patient if it's a 30 minute uh, professional discussion and so on. But in the background, it's doing the transcription for us. I'm going to talk for the next 5%. 5% is always the slowest part. And there is my audio file. It's, tran it's done the transcription, speaker one. And when I click play, I can hear my voice. Scotland are asked if they would consider strike action over COVID school. Okay. And I can then edit if it hasn't picked up the transcription correctly. And I just simply click the plus to add it into my document. Now, I'll, I'll not go through the process of a very a longer with two speakers, but here it is one I prepared earlier. It says he, yeah. So here's a transcript with multiple speakers. Okay, so it knows speaker one, and it's listening and detects speaker two and switch just between the two speakers uh, within the transcripted content. Okay, so speaker one has said at a certain timestamp within the actual uh, audio file that's been uploaded. So transcription, dictation is where you're speaking to it. It picks up your voice and, and creates the, the text. Transcription is where you've pre-recorded, you've got a conversation, a professional discussion that's been recorded, and maybe your awarding body or your students um, want the typed transcript of that in place. Okay. Um, a little trick inside one note, again, is our simply recording a voice. So some of our students, and certainly even for staff, want to give feedback verbally. So what we can just do is under the insert, insert audio, and you simply speak. It's recording what I say. When I click on stop, it's now put the audio into that document. And you'll see it takes a little while to process. Click play, and you simply and you hear speak my voice. It's recording what I say. So that could be and a I way could... for either students who don't have the motor skills to type, um, and also for teaching staff we want to give some sort of oral feedback on a written document or a typed document. Moving on, number three on the tools list is our live captioning. So I'm gonna start with PowerPoint. Okay, so inside PowerPoint, again, this is Office 365. We're under our slideshow. You create your PowerPoint, you're ready to give the presentation. You maybe know 
and understand there's some people with hearing difficulties in your audience online. So what we have is always show subtitles. That's a little on off. So it's off, and now it's on. And I simply start my presentation. So as I speak, it is automatically doing the closed captions or the subtitles. And I can flick between the slides. Oops, sorry. Flick between the slides. And as I speak, it brings it up. Now, again, it's not accurate. You just have to do your pronunciation. Not sure how it'll work with a Scottish, a thick Scottish accent, but it is very, very good. Take this one step further, and this is closed captions on steroids. We start off with the spoken language is listening to me in English, and our Polish friend who is with us can also have subtitled content. Now in PowerPoint, it's only one spoken language that it's listening to, and then one language. So from the beginning, it's now producing the subtitles in Polish. So I'm speaking in English. It's recognizing that, translating it, and relatively quickly, it's able to translate back into Polish. So if you have an audience, you know that there's a Polish speaker, here's a way of doing it. Or maybe your whole audience is Polish but you're still speaking in English for them. Um, our live captions also happen inside Teams. So I'm inside a team. I'm just going to find one that's not going to interrupt anyone, a little demo team. And what I do is start a meeting. And when the meeting starts, as the presenter, yeah, as the presenter, I can put on live captions. And as I speak within the meeting, the live captions will come up. And I say, I have no friends who want to join me in this meeting. But as they speak, I can see their icon, their name, and the, and the text of their spoken voice. Unfortunately, at this stage, it only happens in English. But I'm assured by Microsoft reading some of the forums, they're going to do this in multiple languages as well. So the organizer, click on the, the three dots ellipse, and you turn on or off the live captions. And that's inside a meeting. And I've had meetings with 30 or so students, and it is fantastic for picking up each of their spoken voices as we go through. Now, where else can we use captions that maybe aren't necessarily live? We can do it inside Microsoft Stream. So Stream really is, and I uh, like to tell people that this is a private YouTube channel within your organization. So all the videos that are mounted on site uh, are, can only be visible within our organization. So here's one I prepared earlier, as they say on TV. And what it does when I upload a video, it will do the transcription. And the transcript is then used for the closed captions. So put your closed captions on or off. When you click on play, not need to install anything else onto your machine. Captions on. Um, there are other tools inside Windows 10 that you do need to install. You can see there, we don't either display a full screen. Privileges. You just see the system to install them. But these captions. are all inclusive inside. Or I can have Office 365 and go through so the, just your the transcript as well. To it. Brilliant. Office. If you're maybe learning English. A wee statement there just about uh, accept. Now, transcription isn't 100% as we've seen before. And the owner of the video can edit the transcripts uh, if need be. So live captions inside Teams in a meeting, live, under your PowerPoint, live as you speak. Recorded, I suppose, when you're using Stream. The fourth tool, and we're getting towards the maths here, uh, is translation. So inside translation, I'll just find my Word document. Where am I? 
Um, I'll use this one at the top. Okay, so here's a little piece of text just taken off yeah, a website that we've used. I'm inside Word, I'm inside the review tab, and you'll see this little icon. And they use Microsoft use this through a lot of their um, products. Little A, I think it's a Chinese, Japanese character for translate. So I can highlight a section of text, click on the translate. And what it does, it automatically detects the source language. So it's auto detected as English. And I can then choose which language to translate it into. So our good friend, Polish speaker, and it will do the translation for us. Now, I'm hoping it's not gonna play up. Come on. Don't let me down. <laughs> Live demonstrations. Okay, so I'm inside Word, translate to Polish, and that should work. Come on. Don't let me down. I'll try Irish. It's working earlier. Yeah. So highlight my text, review, translate. There we go. Whew. So again, you don't have to install any of these language packs because it's cloud based. And if I have redeemed myself with Polish, there's the Polish translation. I can click on insert and it overrides what was originally there. Nice little trick that people do to check the translations, they reverse it around. So Polish to English and see if we can get it back again to what it was. Okay. Minute warning, Thomas. Oh, sorry. No, oh, five minute warning. Yeah. So we have a... now that that works brilliantly for a lot of the languages within it. Now we don't just need to do a section; we can translate the whole document itself. Okay. So we'll do it under creation, do a translation, and it creates a new word document for us. Now, where our translation goes to another level is with an app. So Microsoft have a translator app. So you install this on your desktop or get your student to install it. And on my phone, I have then the app also installed and I'm going to initiate a conversation. So on, on my phone, it's asked me for my name, my spoken language, which is English. And what it does, it creates QR code and a code, K-L-Y-I-P. And the student joins or the, the audience join with the code, give themselves a name. I'm a student, a Spanish student, and I can select the language that I want. I click on enter. And we're now in a two-way conversation. So on my phone, I hold down the microphone button. I, my name is Thomas. And you'll see within seconds, there's the Spanish translation. And it also gives me the original English text. Brilliant little piece of um, artificial intelligence. The, the student can also have a two-way, so they hold down their microphone. It translates it, and then on my phone, I'm now seeing the English translation. Obviously, I wasn't speaking in Spanish on this one. So translation is a two-way. You need the app to be able to pick up. You could do it from two desktop machines, but it's brilliant through an app itself. Um, maths, now you're putting me under pressure here in terms of time, but it's worth having a quick look, especially if we've got a maths teacher on board. And I, I like to use this within OneNote. Within OneNote, we have this little maths solver on and off. Now it does take up a lot of processing power and that's why you turn it on and it allows it to be active for 30 minutes. Because what it's doing, it's, 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 it's looking at what's happening in your page and doing some processing. And it'll do solving steps. If there's a graph involved, it allows us to do graphing. So here's a little equation, BODMAS related. 
I then, if I'll close that so you can see the full screen, click on maths. It picks up, that's a proper equation. Well, what do you want to do with it? Well, let's see what the outcome is, 33. So how did you derive 33 from that equation? Show the steps, add the seven and four, and then you multiply by the three, good old baud mass inside the brackets. Let's take it a step further. Let's get a quiz for our kids then. If they understand that equation, let's test them. Generate a quiz. Many questions do you want? Oh, sign in first. How many questions? Let's have them three questions. And it creates Microsoft Form Quiz. I'll talk about these little squiggles later on. Based on our original equation. So it's got brackets, there's a little easy question. They boost their confidence and they submit that. Now I'll remove it for this part. A big thing for um, Surface Pro users and Microsoft is their inking capabilities. So inking allows us to draw on the screen. And what you can do inside the draw feature, you, you can scribble your little equation, but there's a little marquee where you can select. So if I select the scribbled notation, I'll go into maths, it picks it up, one half plus one quarter equals. I can fix it if there's any little scribbly errors in there. What will I do? Evaluate. Three quarters. How did you get to 0.75? Show me the steps. Here's the steps. Back to where we started. Immersive Reader helps us out as well within that. Now, especially, I knew there was going to be a maths teacher. Let's get a little bit more complex. Highlight our inked equation. Close the previous one down. I click on the math solver. It understands it. Solve for x, y. x is a minus 2. Show the steps for factoring, quadratic equation. There's our complex. The math teacher is getting excited now. That's why I hope it's good. <laughs> I hope it's right. And you can copy and paste that in to your text if you want to but also let's generate a quiz based on our quadratic equation. Now to us computing guys, we're just looking at that with amazement. The maths teacher might have a different. And it also, if you look at it, it's Microsoft Forms, therefore the immersive reader works the whole way through. Now that's been a whirlwind through some of the tools that Microsoft embedded into their Office 365 environment. Okay. Any questions? Um, well, can I just bring the um, session to a formal end for the purposes of the recording? So thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, I know we really only scraped the surface with the range of tools available this morning. Um, I still do find it uh, amazing how far we've come in the last 15 years with these types of tools. And one of the things that occurred to me was the, um, I remember a project years ago that um, built a range of natural voices for the different UK regions and including Ireland. And uh, I find it amazing that hasn't been incorporated into a range of these things, but that's just a weak side for it. So um, for the purpose of the recording, this is the formal end. Um, thank you for watching and listening. No worries.